More than one quarter of Chicago's population is Latino, and three quarters of that population is Mexican. The influence of Chicago's Mexican community is everywhere, in its art, entertainment, and food, in its traditions of faith, family, enterprise, and ethnic pride. Hello, I'm Chaplain Dean with the Chicago Police Department. This is the latest in a series of videos to expand your knowledge and understanding of the many diverse communities within our city. Having even a basic knowledge of a person's customs and culture enables police officers to conduct their duties in a more efficient and respectful manner. Today, we explore Chicago's Mexican community. That's all part of Chicago, and that's what makes Chicago very unique because you have all these different groups, and these groups do have the, their pride, and, and they want to uh, simplify their contributions to the city. The first major wave of Mexican immigrants surged into Chicago in the early 1900s. The Latinos in the city of Chicago, it's an old community and it's a new community. The old community is that uh, we have an old community in South Chicago where because of the steel mills, a lot of Latinos, mostly Mexicans, live in the south side. And then we have the Pilsen community, another import location where a lot of immigrants came from Mexico to reside in Pilsen. That became now a, a springboard to the little village community, another large Latino population there. The old jobs that uh, once existed, like in the meatpacking steel, are no longer there. Uh, but now it's more service-oriented work, working in restaurants, uh, janitorial services, landscaping. In Pilsen, you'll actually find a very low unemployment rate because people will work whether it's, it's in a factory, whether it is selling popsicles in the summertime, they will find, they will create work for themselves because that's what they come for. They come for work and to be close to family and friends already living in Chicago. A lot of times people will send money back to Mexico, but at the same time when the people from Mexico come here, you're expected to take care of them. So you will find many times two families living in one apartment. What is happening is that you find one or two nuclear families living together to make ends meet. And that is something to, to take into consideration uh, when you might go into, and a police officer might go into the home and find that two families are living there along with an extended family. New immigrants may not speak or read English. This can be frustrating for both police and the Spanish-speaking public trying to communicate with police. Well, certainly, first of all, the tone of voice um, is, is very important when, when a police officer speaks, speaks to someone who doesn't understand the language. Sometimes when, when one speaks to somebody that, uh, in which language might be the barrier, um, we assume that they're deaf. Um, as opposed to just not understanding what you're saying. And then there's the fear of police that many Mexicans bring with them from their homeland. One of the main problems, again, is the fear to the police, uh, particularly when uh, they are not able to say anything for them, they are not able to talk for themselves, or they are not even able to say that they want to contact the Consulate General. New immigrants, regardless of their legal status, have the right to contact their consulate if they are detained by police. The first right they have is to call their consulate or their embassy. So the embassy can uh, you know, help them out to, with uh, their rights that they do have in any foreign country. Fear of police and fear of deportation may prevent new immigrants from reporting crime. Many times in our community, it's the issues of language, the, the issues of culture um, uh, that are two major barriers, and obviously to some extent the, Im Im the barriers of immigration. Even if you're here documented in this country and you have a legal residence, um, you might not be a U.S. citizen yet, and you might wonder, will this kind of attention uh, play um, affect my opportunity to become a U.S. citizen down the line? The majority of Mexicans who come to Chicago are Catholic. Every year, thousands gather in the Pilsen community to reenact the crucifixion of Christ. There is also great respect for the dead. Mexicans celebrate the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead, which is uh, November 1st and November 2nd, uh, in many homes, you, uh, they built altars 
for the deceased, right, in memory of the deceased. Altars may be erected outside in cases of violent or accidental deaths. A lot of times, especially in the Roman Catholic faith, they will have a novena, which will be nine days of prayer. So you may see a, a, an altar somewhere and have people there for nine days gathering, um, whether at the site or in people's homes or in the church or in all three. The image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is of special significance to Mexicans. One of the most um, strongest cultural icons um, in the Mexican community is definitely the, our, uh, the image of um, Our Lady of Guadalupe. If you go to a Catholic Mexican home, you're going to find the image of Guadalupe there, uh, the Virgin Guadalupe. It is uh, an icon and an important symbol, right, of Mexican identity. Medals of the Virgin of Guadalupe or other saints are often worn and should be treated with respect. Some Mexican Catholics also wear an article of faith called a scapular. There are individuals who have made certain that who um, will do what, they, what is called a manda, or sort of a promise um, that, that um, to um, wear um, um, a, a certain image, um, and that includes the seculars, the brown. Many times they they will wear them permanently, and so to remove them um, and is you know, is very disrespectful. Whether on the body, in the home, or even in a car religious icons should be handled with respect. A lot of these things have been blessed and for them to be blessed by a priest is very big and very important to, um, to, to the Latino community because religion is such an important piece. The Mexican culture holds its elders in high regard and expects others to do the same. So we do have a family orientation. Uh, the elderly you know, are respected in our community. And if an officer is disrespecting an elderly, um, you know, I think that would cause some problems. Showing respect is as simple as acknowledging an older person with a polite hello. If you're walking through the neighborhood and you just kind of wave and say hello, I mean, uh, to, to people that you normally see, uh, it's a good thing, it, especially, especially to our elders um, and to some of the adults in our community. It's very important that, that, you, uh, um, that you do um, acknowledge um, elders in our community. Uh, it's considered a form of respect. Young people like to be respected too and not judged by the clothes they wear. Most Mexican kids are obviously influenced by youth culture in this country, especially the rap music and the hip-hop look, right? And oftentimes that look is associated with gang designs and decor. But it's not, right? It's just a, a style, right, in which kids are influenced by, right? As is the custom in Mexico, Groups of people gather outside to socialize, especially during warmer weather. People of the Latino culture love to hang out. <laughs> we love to hang out and we love to be amongst family and we love to be in big groups. I mean, that's just our nature. That's what we like to do. And when possible, police officers are invited to stop and say hello to people they see socializing on the streets. And the police officer just in the car, and that's why all you see is him in the car there's no interaction. You'll never get to know that person. I think one of the things would be to approach them in a very few, very simple words in Spanish. It would be nice to say buenos dias and buenas tardes, or buenas noches, uh, which is, you know, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, it, it, there's something warm about hearing uh, um, a hello in your native tongue. We're a very open culture, and I think that we're, we're uh, ready, we're willing. To, to make inroads in terms of our relationship with the police officers and uh, the police department. But, uh, but again, we need to take risks, and it's on both sides. You know? We need to create relationships, and we need to take those risks and, um, and build something. All of the people we encounter on a daily basis expect to be treated with dignity and respect. Mexicans are no exception. It is our hope that this video will serve to enlighten and foster a new awareness and understanding. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe.